Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya, if this is your very first time here. Today we are doing a video that for me has been highly requested from you guys, from my Instagram followers, as well as from my very own friends. This video is going to be very, very detailed and it is a beginner's makeup tutorial. I will not only be showing you all of the products that you need for a beginner's face, but also giving tips on blending, tips on products to buy, drugstore and high end, as well as just, you know, being extremely detailed for those of you who feel like you struggle with just coming up with a very basic full face of makeup before we hop into it please make sure that you hit subscribe below I don't want you to miss any videos I got coming your way also make sure you hit that notification bell as well so that you are updated when the videos go up without further ado let's hop right into it all right so I've been wanting to do this video for a nice little amount of time now so I'm happy that we're finally doing it the first tip that I would give before you even start your makeup is to make sure that your skin is moisturized especially for my ladies who do have dry skin it's my skin is low-key kind of combination but more on the oily side of course I do my skincare wash my face and do all that stuff before I start but recently before I do my makeup I've been doing this fourth ray face milk which is kind of like an extra moisturizer you just put it on the palms of your hands and you rub it in and you just put it all over your face and it just gives your face that good moisture feeling that you need without all the extra and depending on where you get dry you don't want to concentrate the product in that area underneath the eyes around the mouth wherever you get dry I would recommend in using something to moisturize your skin. That's just a little, little extra tip. So this, you can go in an order but I am actually gonna do it the order that I feel like is best or where that works for me. Let's not go crazy about the order of this. <laughs> I do my brows first, so that's what I'm gonna do first. But if you prefer to do your brows after your foundation and everything is set and done, then do you boo. But I do my brows first. I never do my brows on camera. I felt like this was the perfect video to actually do them on camera because I feel like the way that I do my brows is very different and less like professional than everyone else, but it turns out beautifully. Typically what I do with my brows is I use pencils. I am going to use this brown pencil, which is has been nice and loved and used. <laughs> it is from Iman. And then I also am gonna use a darker pencil, and this is from NARS. Obviously my brows actually grow in a very square shape, so I usually will shave off the bottom. I don't trust other people to do my brows because I ain't got none. <laughs> so I'll shave off the bottom and then I'll use this pencil just to fill them in and to create a shape on the part that's already there first. So I'll create a line and then I'll kind of like taper it towards this part. So, so far that's what we have. And then I will take this and make sure it's nice and sharp and I'll create kind of a tail, but I'm really gonna go in with the darker color. And this kind of takes some artistic ability to see the kind of art you want. But for me, this is the arch that I usually go for. So from there, like I said, I'm gonna go into this NARS, and this is, the name's still on here, barely, but this is in Last Frontier, High Pigment Long Wear Eyeliner, and I'm just going to deepen this on the edges where I couldn't really get the color and kind of taper it into the front part of the brow. So we all know that brows are sisters and not twins, so it already looks like they're kind of uneven, different shapes or different width, width, but that can all be fixed with some concealers. This is the most important part of your brows. Honestly, before that, you can go ahead and brush them through with a spoolie brush, especially in the front part, just to make sure like it has that blended look. I still do my brows like this. A lot of people don't do their brows like this anymore, but it works for me, so. And then I take my concealer, and this concealer I'm using is the Stay Naked Correcting Concealer from Urban Decay. And I usually will put little dots right underneath. And y'all, I do this in literally like two minutes every morning. And then I'll take a paddle brush. This one is from Colored Rain. And I begin to use that concealer to sculpt underneath. And that's where the snatch brow starts to come in. <laughs> and a lot of people don't like to use the lighter concealer for this, but I do it because I'm gonna put foundation over that anyway and just blend it into the skin. Then I'll use this brush or my beauty blender just to blend the color downwards and also blend in between the brows as well. And our brows are done. Easy, right? So we're gonna go ahead and hop into the face. The first thing that we want to make sure that we do is put on primer. Primer is important. And the reason that primer is important is it gives you a barrier in between your makeup and your skin. And it also creates a more consistent base for your makeup to sit upon versus your skin and the texture of your skin and everything like that. The one I'm using today is Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer. This is a new product and this is the Perfecting Primer. And what I'm gonna do is just put it on the forehead and on the cheeks and 
can blend it in. One tip that I would give about primer is you don't want to massage it into the skin so much like lotion or like skin moisturizer or anything that you use massage into the skin. You kind of want to leave a film of it on the skin so that that primer layer is there. And if I was to give a recommendation for primer, more high end, I would go with any Laura Mercier primers or even the one from Milk Makeup, the Hydro Grip Primer, which is an amazing primer if you're not worried about um, having a hydrating primer, this would be perfect. In more drugstore, I would say Maybelline uh, Master Prime. All of those primers work really, 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 really well. I get the best results of putting on primer with my fingers, so I would recommend doing that versus using a brush. Now we're gonna hop into foundation. Number one tip for foundation for beginners is make sure it matches this. Make sure it matches. I've mentioned on previous videos just my own tips of how to match your foundation. You don't want to match your neck. I say match your chest area. If you can see, my chest is lighter than my neck and my face. But I don't want to make my face the color of my neck because then all of this will be the same color and this will be lighter and then you look crazy. And then I don't want to match this color of my face because my face is about to be covered up and then it's still going to be darker than my chest. The best thing to do is to match like about right here. That way you get a blend between your neck and your chest. And this one is the NARS Natural Radiant and this is in Macau. For me, it's a good match because if you put it there and you blend it out, though it's looking a little lighter on my neck, it's blending in seamlessly with my chest. That is the reason that I go for Macau. Macau. I've had people recommend a, diff a deeper color for me, and sometimes that might work, because sometimes I do mix Macau with another color, especially when it's summertime, or I might use a whole color, another color completely. I feel like this is a good color because it brings this color all the way up, and then we can sculpt and everything from there, and I'm just one solid color. So for foundation, depending on the level of coverage you want, I usually go for about three or four pumps and then I'll put it on my face with my finger in different areas and then I choose what tool I want to use for me I would recommend either using a beauty blender I know you can get sponges from a lot of other different places beauty blender is the best one hands down period it's expensive I know but it's the best one or you can use a dense foundation brush this one is from elf and this is my favorite one because it's very very dense and I use this a lot so I'm gonna go ahead with this because obviously this is cheaper than our beauty blender option and you just can use it in a buffing motion I am also making sure I get this on my eyes as well before we move on to concealer if i'm going to make any foundation recommendations i'm high end i would say nars favorite foundation hands down nars natural radiant foundation i would say is the best one i'm on a lower end i'm gonna go ahead and stick with the good old maybelline any foundation in maybelline honestly to me is the best drugstore or more affordable foundation for concealer i'm gonna go ahead and use the concealer from urban decay you do want to make sure your concealer is the correct color for you and it's your undertone I feel like I'm more neutral so I use a neutral concealer either this one and this is in the color 70 NY or my radiant creamy concealer from NARS and that's one that one I use in Amon your concealer you do want to put in the places where you want to highlight so not only are we concealing but since this is beginners we want to conceal and we want to highlight in the same step so not only are you brightening up some places in your face that might be darker but also creating the highlighted look in that area underneath your eyes depending on the shape of your face and what you want to insinuate or not you want to put the shape so you want to bring it further down here by your nose if you have maybe a shorter face and you want to elongate it if you have more of a longer face and you want to kind of scrunch it in a little bit definitely don't bring it down you want to bring it more out i also highlight under right at my cubics bow on my chin as well as my forehead and then i also contour down my nose if you have an applicator it's the easiest way to do it is to just draw the line straight down the nose but everyone has their own face shape and what they want to insinuate, how they want their nose to look. So nose contouring to me is very relative of how you want to do it and how you want your nose to look. But me in particular, I like it to be aligned straight down the nose. This is the amount of concealer you need for a regular everyday face. You don't need it extra, you don't need it in this area. That kind of starts to create the more 
highlighted and contoured look. We're going for something a little more natural, an everyday face for a full face for someone who's just starting out or needs to know everything to use. So this is the perfect amount of concealer. You don't want it to be too bright because then you get the white under eye Kim Kardashian look and we ain't going for that. And you don't want it to be too close to your foundation color because then you don't get the effect of the highlight and the snatch of the face, you know? Now I'm gonna go into my Beauty Blender and blend out my concealer, and this is the best thing to blend, if you ask me, way better than using a brush. And I would say blend with tapping motions. You don't wanna see the transition from the foundation to the concealer, like a sharp line. And if you notice, the places that I'm highlighting, I'm not moving the product out, I'm just kinda patting it into the skin so that it blends in, but not move not i don't want it to move i want it to be where i put it which is why we don't do swiping motions we do patting motions since this is a beginner's tutorial we don't really need to contour the face however just for the heck of it but let it be known that i said it's unneeded <laughs> i am going to go ahead and contour and this is with my nars radiant creamy and this is in dark coffee and when you're contouring you do want to go around the perimeter of the forehead depending on how big your forehead is you might want to make that a little make that a little deeper you know because it does help to create an illusion of a smaller forehead i do have a five head it's covered a little bit by this wig so i'm a little i'm deceiving y'all right now but i do like to kind of shorten my head <laughs> and then you also go in on the cheekbone I don't put it like down here. I kind of put it a little bit higher because you do want to accentuate the highest part of your cheeks. And then sometimes I will put it down my nose. This is completely optional, but if you are a nose contour or you do want to create a different shape of the nose, then do it at this point with your concealer. From there, I'm going to blend out my concealer. The brush that I use is from Nivero Techniques and this is their expert face brush. It's very dense and it's very concentrated on, you know, where it hits. It's not as fluffy and big as this one. And I use this to blend out my contour. So I'm blending this out in circular motions just to create some definition in the face, a different shade than just all the same foundation. And this just kind of creates the natural shades of the face. I'm blending this into the hairline and also down into the concealer with padding motions to make sure that it is blended seamlessly. The brush that I usually use to contour my nose is like an angled fluffy brush and this is what it looks like. I just pretty much go in with a concealer and just blend it on all sides and just make sure that the line is not harsh. That it's just a blend of color and shading versus an actual line. Cause a lot of people get messed up at this part and you don't have to. As long as you give it the time and attention that it needs to make sure it's not a straight line. Now I usually take my beauty blender and put any excess concealer on my lids. We're not gonna go in with eyeshadow today. We're probably gonna use some bronzer on the eyes. So I'm just doing this because this is somewhere we are going to want to set as well when we're about to set the face. For my recommendations for concealer, I'm going to say my favorite concealers high end is Laura Mercier and NARS and I know that we're hearing a lot of the same <laughs> the same brands but I would have to say those are my favorite as well as my Too Faced Born This Way. Drugstore brands or more affordable makeup ColourPop No Filter Concealer is that chick. And of course they have one that's less coverage and so that is their Pretty Fresh Concealer. I really really like that one as well. Also L'Oreal Infallible. <laughs> I don't know what they thought they were doing with that one, but they hit it on the head. That is a very full coverage drugstore concealer. If you're looking for one of those, that is the one to get. We are going to go ahead and set the face. You do need a good setting powder. For my deeper skin ladies, I'm going to recommend the Minted Skin Silk. This one, it does come in three different shades. This is actually the middle shade. They have one that's darker than this. And just five years ago, that was unheard of, which is amazing. So I would recommend using two different powders. I use two different powders, but if we're just starting, go with one. I would say go for one that's a little bit lighter than your skin complexion. Um, but I do use the Translucent, which is from Laura Mercier, and then I use the Skin Silk. And I use this as a skin tone powder to set my entire face. First, I'm gonna go ahead with Laura Mercier. I'll put a little bit on the lid, shake it around a little bit, make sure all my creases are gone because you don't want to set creases into your face because then they're just gonna be there from the time you got your makeup on to when you take your makeup off and it's gonna be way worse 
when you take your makeup off. Make sure your creases are gone so that your set lasts a lot longer. I usually crease right underneath the eyes. I'll take my beauty blender, I dip it into the powder. That's a lot of powder. I will put that on the back of my hand and then I can go in with the powder. With the powder, you want to press it into the concealer. This is a method for ladies who do have more oily skin. If your skin is more dry, I would recommend using a brush. Using this to pat the powder into the skin like this will help to not dry your skin out as much. But if you're an oily chick like me, you need the Beauty Blender. So I use the lighter shade one where I put my concealer. So where I highlight it with the lighter concealer is where I put the lighter shade. And if you want any parts of your face to be lighter, AKA baking, a lot of people don't do baking anymore. But if you do want to bake, that means just putting on the powder on that area, let it sit for a moment. So I just put it down my nose, but I went in with my brush that I did my concealer with for my contour and just went down each side to make sure that the sides are not baking, only that middle part. And while I have my nose baking, cause that's really the only place that I kind of wanted to bake and get a little brighter, I'm gonna go into my Minted Skin Silk. And this, like I said, is a skin tone powder. I use this for my to set the rest of my face. We still got liquid and everything all over the face. Foundation, concealer, it's not set. Meaning you put your finger right here, it's gonna come right off. And that ain't what we want. I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush. I'm gonna dip into the powder, blow, and just dust it all over the face where I did not put the lighter powder. I'm doing this in circular motion so that it does not leave any streaks. And then I'm gonna pat off this baking here. I'm taking any excess powder and putting it on my lids so that they are set as well. So we just want a very neutral lid. If you want under here to be highlighted, if you are a brown woman, you need to use this powder. Not this one. And the reason I say that is because you don't want this to be as bright as under your eye or down your nose. You want it to be more of a neutral color, something that is blending in with your skin tone. So I'll do the same thing that I did with the lighter shade, dip my beauty blender in that, go like that, and kind of bake underneath. That way it's gonna make it lighter, it's gonna give you that snatched illusion, and it's a color that doesn't wash you out or make you look white and powdery. I also, as a tip, I do use this powder as well to set my smile line. Even though I just set it with this powder, I go in hard with it. So I'm dipping it, doing that again, and pressing it into my smile lines. Sometimes I'll let this bake. Other times I'll just press it in just like that. But anywhere that you crease, if you crease on the top of your lip, if you crease here, anywhere that's on your face that's not actually like under your under eyes or where you highlight it, press that powder in, sis. It can be translucent powder, period, if you're of a lighter complexion or if you are not a woman of color. But if you are and you got a little melan melanin in your skin, you my complexion and darker, definitely use a skin tone powder. Powder recommendations. High end, of course. Laura Mercier Translucent and Laura Mercier Medium Deep Translucent. Both of those are amazing formulas. It is more matte, so if you're going for a more matte look, you definitely wanna do that, as well as the Skin Silk from Minted. Maybelline has come out with some powders that are different shades, so big ups to Maybelline. I would say that that is the best choice for you if you own a good old budget. Next, we are gonna move into bronzer. The bronzer that I'm using is the Minted by ABH bronzer, bronzer and this is their season one duo. This is their medium shade. We need bronzer to warm up the face. Though we, you know, are creating the shadows with the concealer and the powder and everything like that, bronzer is really gonna give us just that sun-kissed, beautiful skin type of look and kind of bring color back in to the face that we lost with all the products we've used so far. I'm gonna take a fluffy brush. You might wanna use something more concentrated depending on where you like your bronzer. I kinda like it to be more blended and more blown out. I'm gonna dip into this, blow, and start circular motions where I want my bronzer. Bronzer belongs kinda where you contoured, but you're not contouring the face, you're just adding more color in that area. So typically, I would say your bronzer shade should be about two shades darker than you. Nothing too deeper than that, cause then you start getting into contouring, but it does go in the area where you contoured. In a sense, that is a fact. Honestly, I would say that you don't necessarily, like I said before, have to contour for your beginner's face, your regular everyday face. A bronzer will give you kind of that effect, but having that concealer underneath helps it to last 
longer because not only did you add the color and the powder, but there's color underneath in a cream. So it gives it more pigmentation. It gives it more staying power. Another thing that I love about bronzer is it is multifunctional. I use my bronzer for multiple things. Right now, I just used it to bronze up the face, but now I'm also going to use it to contour down my nose and to make that a little bit deeper and kind of go over my contour with this brush and just make it a little more, a little deeper, make it a little more pronounced. Bronzer is helpful because it definitely helps you to keep the same color and shades going on in your face, which makes you have more continuity. And that's why I like to use it for my nose contour as well as for my eyes. With a fluffy brush for eyeshadow, I'm just gonna dip into this and put it right here in the corner of the eye. In circular motions, I'm just gonna go in the corner just to bring the color of our bronzer into the eyes and make you look even more snatched. With a flat brush, I'm gonna go back into the bronzer and I'm gonna put a line underneath my eyes with the bronzer. I feel like so many people forget how that continuity up top and the bottom just kind of brings everything together and makes it look more natural if you ask me. That's why I went ahead and put a little bit on the lower lash line. I mean, to be utterly and completely honest, we really didn't need it at all. But if we're gonna do something that's super neutral, super natural, and good for beginners, use your bronzer as your eyeshadow. That way you don't need a whole nother product, you don't need a whole bunch of brushes, you know? You can pretty much just have a look and a more put together look than not having anything there at all. We're almost done. We're gonna go ahead and finish off the eyes. So I feel like it's easiest to use a liquid liner if you're gonna line your eyes because, especially one with like a felt tip, because it's easier to manage and control versus using a pencil. Um, so I'm gonna just put a line, not really gonna wing it out or anything, but it's gonna be right there just at the tip of my lash line just so I have somewhere to put my lashes. To me, it just gives your eyes more of a defined look versus just putting on your lash Lashes. For my lashes, I'm gonna use these lashes from Color Rain. These are big, very fluffy lashes. Well, one thing that I would recommend, and I actually can't do it on camera right now because I don't have the right type of glue, but if you buy a duo glue, Duo number one is the best lash glue, in my opinion. So get you some Duo, they sell at Walgreens, CVS, all that. Drugstore, this is what you need. They do have a kind that has a wand, kind of like a liquid liner. If you struggle, you put it on lashes. All you have to do is use that wand and put it on just like I just did this black liner. Place your lashes right on top. At least about 30 seconds, wait for it to get tacky. Place your lashes right on top and your lashes are there. Done. Very easy. Not doing it today because I don't have that kind, but I did want to drop that little knowledge on y'all real quick. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place these right on the eyes. But before I do that, I do want to make sure that I have on some mascara. The reason that I put mascara on my lash line, on my lashes up top, even though I'm about to put on false lashes, is to kind of prep them and it's easier for them to blend underneath it. Never wanna have on a deep, dark, big fluffy lash and you get close to somebody and you can see their little stubby lashes hanging from underneath with all type of makeup on them and they brown. That ain't what you want. That's why we do this under the lashes. And I mean, you know, if you bless with some lashes, some nice long, nice big fluffy lashes, then you can skip this part altogether, but that ain't my story. I haven't been blessed in that way. And I do get a lot of questions about how to apply lashes. I wore lashes from my junior prom in high school and I haven't stopped wearing them since. So I have a lot of practice with lashes, which is why it's so easy for me to just pop them on. But the tip that I did just give you about using the lash glue as a liner, that will help you tremendously because as soon as you put on your lash, it will stick to the exact spot where you put that glue and it'll be stuck all day in the right spot. And that can help eliminate a lot of the where do I put the lash type of situation. From there, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of mascara on my bottom lash line just to define those lashes. From there, we are gonna go into highlighter and blush. I am not a blush girl. I have said this multiple times. So while I do use blush and occasionally in a look, um, typically it is not my jam. So I'm not gonna use it today. I'm not gonna use blush. I think we all know how to put on blush. You know, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> One thing I am is a highlighter girl. So I'm gonna go ahead into some highlighter. I was told that this highlighter is discontinued. This is from ColourPop and Shayla and it's called Pose. It's a sad day, but regardless, what I love about this highlighter 
is the fact that it is it's like a copper color it's gold but it's copper and we all know that gold highlighters look great on darker skin complexions don't go for the icy baby just sis skip the icy because highlighter <laughs> but i do love this highlighter it is so beautiful and that's why i go for it the brush that i use for it is a very small tapered eyeshadow brush and i use this to put it on the places on my face like my nose my tear ducts underneath my eyebrows on my cubic bow or because i want it to be very controlled and i know where i want to put it first thing i do is put this on the tip of my nose Whew. It's nice and bright I usually would do it like that and then I'll use my finger to blend it out around it because I don't want it to be too big be careful where you put your highlighter because it's hard to remove it once you get it in a plot in a spot where you don't want it to be but also just put a small amount that way you have control of the blend and I almost always use a clean finger afterwards to blend out the product that I placed and I'm using a fluffy shadow brush to put this on the high parts of my cheekbones. If you're using a loose highlighter like I am, definitely make sure you blow it before you put it on your face because it's gonna go everywhere. And anybody got time for that? I'm trying to put on just enough so that it looks like we're glowing from within and not that we just piled on a lot of powder, you know? Recommendations, Maybelline Master Chrome. That is the one to get if you are low on them dollars. Higher end, Becca has some really beautiful highlighters. We all know that. NARS highlighters I would not recommend to me they're not very blinding but that's what I like if you want something that's more subdued or something more subtle I would go for NARS and Laura Mercier highlighters so from there all we have left are the lips so I'm just gonna go ahead in with a gloss for my lips and this is from NARS this is in I don't even know how to say it so I'm gonna put it on the screen <laughs> and this is a very pinky lip gloss I think she's cute for this natural look now we are going to set the face why is setting the face important it's important Important because it sets your makeup into place and makes sure that it goes nowhere so you definitely want to choose a formula that is long setting meaning that it will help your makeup to stay put for longer and what I do use is the all-nighter setting sprays from Urban Decay and if you are oily like me I would totally recommend these sprays especially the ultra matte so you hold it about this far there we go there's perspective <laughs> this far away from your face close your eyes might want to cover up your eyes depending on what's going on there pull your lips in and spray away another tip it helps to dry it down quickly well as you can use the butt of your beauty blender to push it into the skin that helps with the staying power and ladies we are done all right guys so this is the finished look i hope that this video was helpful for you guys like i said i have gotten a lot of requests for this type of video and i wanted to really give you guys something that was very detailed gave all the tips that i can give all the recommendations that i can give for those of you who are just getting into makeup and wanting to beat your face you know and find it to be a struggle i hope that this made it a little bit easier for you if you guys enjoyed this video please make sure you give me a big thumbs up comment below and let me know what you think share this video video if you really really like it also make sure that you have hit subscribe below so that you are updated every time that i drop a new video and i'll see y'all next time bye